Greetings, Asian and Pacific Islander American Fund scholars, Gates Millennial scholars, and alumni. I'd like to welcome you to the Asian and Pacific Islander American Leadership Spotlight. My name is Penny Samaya, and in today's video, we'll be focusing on establishing group goals. Before I begin, I'd like for you to keep in mind that there are numerous styles and numerous ways on establishing group goals. What I'll be talking about in today's video are skill sets that I've learned in my own profession and my own career that has helped me and that these are based on my own skill sets and experiences. With that being said, let's begin. Establishing group goals will help you in three ways. One, it will provide a base or a ground to stand on as a group. Two, it will provide you with a focus point on various items or objectives, and three, it will provide legitimacy to your group. But prior to establishing these group goals, you need to agree on two things. One, the process in which you're going to take in establishing the group goals. What this will do is help uh, smoothen out any type of differences or tension within the group. And two, agree on how you're going to approve these established group goals. So once your group is in agreement in these two areas, you would then begin the process of establishing your goals. So where do we begin from there? Well, you need to answer this question. Who are you as a group? What is your purpose, mission, or vision? This will help give you an identity of uh, what type of group you are, you are um, working towards or trying to become. Two. Who are the stakeholders or the constituents? Who are those that will be affected by your group? Whether it's an Asian and Pacific Islander American group or another specific uh, group. The third part I want to talk about briefly is a SWOT analysis. Now SWOT is a pro, or is a analysis that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Typically this is something that's used in the business world or in business courses when you're analyzing various um, objectives. Now what I want you to be able to focus on with this SWOT is your specific group. What are the group's strengths? What are the group's weaknesses or in what I like to say areas where you can improve? The other uh, points that you need to analyze are what are opportunities that for the group as well as where are the threats for the group. So for example, outside or external um, resources, what are available? Or outside and external uh, entities, what are some threats that you might um, run into as a group? Um, and these last three points that I have up here from mandates, policies, and issues, those are typically things that you can throw in there to help you identify the identity of the group. So for example, are you mandated as a group to have specific objectives? Are there specific policies and um, uh, procedures that you need to follow? And finally, issues. Are there specific issues or topics of importance to your group? Now once you've answered these questions by using these various points, you can move on to the next step. That next step being the process of establishing group goals. Now the process that we like to utilize in my industry is, some, is an acronym that says SMART. All right? SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Timely. Each one of these specific points are important to setting goals because it will help you gauge and provide you with the focus of uh, those specific goals. So for example, be specific when it comes time to listing goals and objectives. What do I mean? Well, for example, as a group, don't try and be broad with what you want to accomplish. Be specific. Best example I can give is if you as a group set a goal of traveling around the world. That's broad. But if you were, were to have a specific goal of saying having two field trips to the Washington DC area every year, that's specific. That's something that is measurable. Think of quantitative when you're thinking of measurable. How many times you can do it, uh, the sum mass of it, 
whatever. What you want to try and do is establish concrete criteria that will help you progress towards attaining that goal. Attainable. This is very important because you have to be realistic. This is why you started out with answering who you are as a group. Your purpose, mission, vision, stakeholders, but most importantly, your SWOT analysis. Is it attainable within your strengths or is it not attainable because you have specific weaknesses or lack certain things to attain that goal? Another word for that is realistic. Being realistic, you have to be honest with yourself as a group. Can you work towards those specific goals? Or do you have the resources? What are your strengths? What are your setbacks? Be very realistic as a group. And finally, timely. Every goal you should have, remember we talked about measurable, they should fit within a specific time frame. When do you want to accomplish it? How long do you have to accomplish it? You want to ensure that you have something of a timely fashion with each specific goals so you can gauge your successes and your setbacks. This will help you become a stronger unit as well as provide resources to those or your constituents within your specific group. Finally, the, the last two steps of establishing group goals, I want you to think about prioritizing them. It's great to have 10 specific goals. Sometimes, realistically, it might not be feasible to, to work on all 10 of those specific goals. So what you need to understand is what is of the top priority? Again, going back to the first step or second step, who are you as a group? Stakeholders, SWOT analysis, mandates, policies, and issues. Within this first analysis, you should be able to identify what's most important to the specific group. And last but not least, methods. There are numerous methods on how you can establish group goals. A, you can start by assigning specific tasks in small groups. So you'll have a small, if you have an organization of 10 individuals, have a small group of five, another small group of five, and split up the responsibilities. Or B, a retreat. This is probably one of the most popular um, methods of establishing group goals because what it does is it brings everybody into one setting. Uh, it takes out all of the outside distractions and you're able to focus. One thing with retreats I would highly uh, recommend is provide some social um, exercises or get to know how, get to know you type programs to help make that retreat a lot more enjoyable and a lot funner. Well, just to rehash what we briefly spoke about, again, your first step into um, establishing group goals. One, agree on the process. Two, agree on approving the uh, established group goals. Next step, identify who you are as a group. What are, what's your vision, mission, or purpose? Who are the stakeholders? The SWOT analysis. Remember, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, as well as taking into consideration if there's any mandates, policies, and procedures and specific issues that are important to your group. Next step, the process, SMART. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Remember that acronym. And the last two steps, prioritize your goals so you can attain them, as well as specific methods. You can do it in small groups or in a retreat. I'd like to thank you again for uh, visiting us here in the Asian in Pacific Islander American Leadership Skills Spotlight. My name is Penny Samaya, and you have a great day.